Picking up where we slightly uh, mentioned the inverse and the converse and the contrapositive, it leads us to well, what is a correct way of reasoning with those things. And one of the things that dealing with the converse can lead to is an error. Now, the converse is not the only way that you can reason to get to an error. The inverse also happens to lead you to an error. And the converse and the inverse, if you recall, these are contrapositives of each other. So for example, given that A implies B, so if A, then B, given that the converse is going to be B implies A, and the inverse is going to be not A implies not B. So what this would be saying with the converse would be, if B happens, then A happens. And you're supposing that if A happens, then B happens is true. This thing over here is correct. And then the converse would then be saying, well, if B, then A. So for example, uh, if I, it, or well, let's say if it's raining, then I will use an umbrella. Now, does that mean if I use an umbrella, then it's raining? Well, not necessarily, because then that would seem to imply that somehow it just so happens whenever I use an umbrella, then it causes it to rain. And that's kind of weird and not necessarily true. The inverse would be, if it does not rain, then I do not use an, an umbrella. And that's not necessarily true either. Now, this should be, um, again, a, d a deductive answer that you might just stumble upon from figuring out that the converse and the inverse are contrapositives of each other. So if you recall, the contrapositive is always true. So if A implies B, if A, then B. If that's true, then we know for a fact that if B does not happen, right, not B, then that means a did not happen, right? Because we said if A happens, then B will happen. So if B did not happen, then it's impossible for A to have happened because if it did, B would have happened, right? So those are two things that we can know for certain. That's known as the contrapositive. The contrapositive is always true. The converse is not necessarily true based off of just some A implies B. And the inverse, which is just saying not A implies not B, that's not necessarily true based off of A implies B either. And we should be able to figure that out because the converse says B implies A, and then the inverse says, if not A, then not B, which would make sense if B implies A is what you're talking about. Because B, right, you make it negative, put it over here. A, make it negative, put it over here. That's the same thing that's happening with the contrapositive. You took A, the first one, made it negative, put it on the right. Take B, make it negative, put it on the left. So the converse and inverse are contrapositives to each other. But they lead you to an error, possibly, in reasoning. So you cannot rely on them as absolutes. So, for example, let's say if I sit in the front of the class, then I get a good grade. So assume that that is always true. So you walk into a classroom, every time you sit in this seat, this seat, or this seat, you get a good grade. Now, does that mean that if you get a good grade, then you sat in the front of the classroom? Not necessarily, because it could also be that if you're just a really good student, you also get a good grade. But for some reason, whenever you sit in the front of the classroom, you get a good grade as well. There could be multiple things that affect the outcome of a good grade. So to say that if you had a good grade, then it solely depended on the fact that you sat in the front of the classroom, that is not necessarily true. So that's a converse error. But a converse error will be the same thing, logically speaking and deductively speaking, it will be the same thing as an inverse error because they are contrapositives of each other. They're saying the same thing. So for example, to reason that if I do not sit in the front of the classroom, then I do not get a good grade, well, that sounds like an absolute statement that would make this true, right? If I don't sit in the front of the class, then I don't get a good grade. Well, that makes sense using this reasoning, this one here, because this said if I got a good grade, then I must have been sitting in the front of the classroom, right? So, so therefore, if I don't sit in the front of the class, then I do not get that good grade that this said I would get. So these say the same thing. Both of these are saying the same thing as the other one, each other. But they're not saying the same thing as this first statement. And that's because they are the converse and the inverse to that original statement. So the reasoning is not always absolute. They're using the converse and the inverse. The converse and the inverse, they lead you to an error. Now, where do you usually see this? Most of the time, you see this error made when people are using statistics. You may have heard of the famous phrase, correlation does not equal causation. What this is implying is that, let's say you have some statistical data. So for some reason, when I plot the grade of a student versus their sitting location, those that are in the front end up with a higher grade, and those that are in the back end up with a lower grade. So perhaps we have some sort of data that shows this. 
This particular correlation here means that you're more likely, if, you, if you're sitting in the front of the class, you're more likely to be getting a good grade. Now, what might be the cause of this? Does this mean that merely by changing your location, you then achieve that good grade? Or does it mean that people who are more likely to get a good grade will choose that location? Right? One of these things causing the other isn't necessarily true. Right? Just because they're correlated, just because the location happens to happens to match up with the higher grade, that does not mean that the location is causing the higher grade. So correlation does not equal causation. And to assume that it does would be to assume um, a bit more of an, an inverse or converse error. Now, it's not directly an inverse or converse error. But it would be, suppose, suppose that the location implies, so whoever chooses that location, those determine the grades that they get. Suppose that that is true. So that means if I choose a location, then it affects the grade directly. That does not necessarily mean then that you couldn't defy this. It doesn't mean that that if you are getting that grade, that it absolutely will imply a specific location, right? It could, and it appears that the location does determine the grade, but it's not necessarily been proven true yet that the grade is determining the location, right? You can't, you can't just assume that the grade has determined the location just because you've determined that the location determines the grade. So that's the converse error. That converse error is made, unfortunately, a bit too frequently than it should be. Uh, one, of the, one of the things in mathematics that you have to, to be able to take into account before you can do things with functions is show that a function is one-to-one. -one. What does it mean to be one-to-one? -one? Well, it means that every time I put an x value in there, so let, let's say we have some, some function, some equation, Whenever I plug a value in for x, it is directly tied to only one value of y. So if I plug in 1, well, then y must be 1. If I plug in 19, then y must be 19. If I plug in negative 50, y must be negative 50. If I plug in the square root of 2, y must be the square root of 2, right? There is only one specific value for every input. It's 1 to 1. And there's only one specific value for every output. So using this, I could reason that if y is 2, I know that x has to be 2. If x is 2, I know that y has to be 2. It goes both ways. That's a one-to-one -one function. And the idea here is that equations tell you the converse as well. Equations tell you that if I have x, then it means something about y. And equations also tell you if I have y, then it's telling me something about x. So for example, it might make more sense to use a function that is not one-to-one. -one. Let's say y equals x squared. Now, if I know what x equals, let's say x is 1, I know y must be 1. If x is 2, y must be 4. If x is negative 2, y must be 4. If x is 50, then y is 50 squared, right? <laughs> so in order to figure that out, I need to know the x values. Now, let's suppose that y happens to equal 4. What does x have to be? Well, unfortunately, you don't get one answer. x could be 2, because 2 squared is, is 4, but it could also be negative 2, because negative 2 squared is also 4. Because of this, this function is not 1 to 1. You're not allowed to reason the exact same way. And in mathematics, if you're given a function, sometimes you're asked to find the inverse to that function. If it's not 1 to 1, then you don't find one inverse, you actually find multiple functions that could potentially be used to determine the input value based on the output. And this is a simple one that I just gave you. If x squared equals y, what this means is that the x value, because it's being squared, you're sort of eliminating some of the negatives. So if I plug in, you know, negative 10, I'll get 100, positive 100. y will be positive 100. But if I put in positive 10, then y will be positive 100. So if I just told you that, that the, the given output was 100, you would need two particular functions to figure out what the original input was. So to problem solve it backwards, it's not absolute. It is not absolute in your reasoning. It's sort of up in the air. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Just like the converse and inverse errors. If you sit in the front of the class, then you get a good grade. Does that mean that if you get a good grade, you were sitting in the front of the class? Maybe, or it could be that it wasn't the cause. Just because you get a good grade does not mean you were sitting in the front of the class. That's inverse and converse reasoning. It's technically just converse reasoning, but since they are contrapositives of each other, the converse and the inverse are uh, saying the same thing as each other.
logically speaking. So the converse and the inverse, they can lead to an error. And it's very similar to a one-to-one -one error in mathematics. It's the same kind of idea. So that's how the converse and the inverse work. And you really need to be aware of making that mistake so that you don't fall into uh, a fallacy, a logical fallacy in your reasoning.